Welcome back to Radio Taiwan International. You're listening to Geek Out. What's your cup of tea? Tickles your fancy or floats your boat? Join us as we share passions from people in Taiwan and around the world. I'm your host, Michelle Chang, and today in the studio we have returning to Radio Taiwan International, Tomash. Who didn't set his phone Was on you? silent? No. <laughs> Tomash Copper and Leslie Liao. Uh, I, to be honest, that could have just been the sound effect from the uh, music. I wouldn't have been yeah. able to tell the difference. Oh, okay. Then it was the sound effect <laughs> from music. I mean... Like, I wouldn't put it past you that like you sent me a text just now just to <laughs> test if I put my phone on silent. You give me a lot of credit, but that's a pretty good idea. I'll keep that one mm. in the pocket. Right. But yes, uh, welcome to Geek Out. Uh, we are now taking over the show. We are returning hosts, and there's two of us yes. and only one of Michelle. Oh, no. I'm mm-hmm. outnumbered. Power new vacuum. listeners, new listeners, you guys should, uh, we still have on the website, you guys old shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tomash oh. did Digi Taiwan. Yes. And Leslie, you were in. I did hashtag Taiwan. That's right. Yeah, we did a. And you showed up on Taiwan Insider and everywhere else. Yeah, I showed mm-hmm. up on Taiwan Insider, but hashtag Taiwan was kind of my thing. I remember spending a lot of time trying to figure out what I was doing each week because it was an examination of what was going on in Taiwan. However, yeah. if you if you really want the uh, Tomash and Leslie power half hour, uh, <laughs> then the, there were a lot of episodes of uh, here in Taiwan that we did together. Oh, that's oh, a good right. way to say it, the power half hour. I yeah. like Love that. <laughs> if you don't mind, I might steal that from the future. So Leslie departed uh, RTI in October of, of last year. Last year. So we're coming 22. up actually... A You're, year, wow. You've yeah, been wow. gone for a year, man. That's wild. Yeah, and Tomash, you left... Uh, in December. In December. Shortly after Leslie. Mm-hmm. I just I just couldn't stand it, you know? He broke, he broke my heart. You guys don't he... have to lie to me. I smell bad. I'm bad <laughs> I wasn't even in the office with you. I just knew you from before. <laughs> so, where have you been since you've departed? Well, we have stayed in the media sphere. We've moved on to Taiwan's new government initiative called uh, Taiwan Plus, which... If I had to boil it down to one sentence, it's like Taiwan's government trying to do NH- NHK, NHK Arirang, ah. or you know the BBC service, World Service that UK has, English 24-hour, or well, not even 24-hour, but it's an English platform that services Taiwan. Well, it is a TV channel. Yeah, we, we started as a, as a content platform, mm-hmm. online content platform, and then pivoted to TV channel um, because someone thought it was... A, Good idea because everyone watches TV these days. That things. wasn't part of the agreement, though. <laughs> you know, that was never that. It was never supposed to be on TV when it first no, came to be. Originally, no. But then, but then someone decided that we should also go into legacy media. And well, since we are here to talk about you know things that are we are passionate about, and media is one of mm-hmm. them. I guess there is some credibility to that claim that like being a TV is marginally good. I mean, there is benefit of being TV just because it lends credibility it to, to what you're doing otherwise right exactly mm. so no one would care about bbc podcast if bbc had not had originally a, radio a well and established a media, media presence exactly, already exactly right. and one way to do that is tv definitely yes. yeah uh, with the nature of our job is still very much journalistic as it was at rti and a lot of the time when you're calling up people for interviews or to do like a story the minute you tell them oh we're a tv channel they go, oh tv ah. <laughs> now you have my attention <laughs> Well, especially the the I guess the older generation who still watches TV. Those who still watch TV are they? No, well, no, no, no. Um, uh-huh. yes, the, we 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 do get a lot of uh, viewers in the uh, in the older generation. Yeah. I have to say, oh, on on some of our shows at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you, what exactly do you guys do though? Well, um, Blessy. Well, I am a reporter there, uh, but I'm also an anchor. So I do the nightly news on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yes, you can see his handsome face on TV. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot of hands on there, right? <laughs> I, I like to gesticulate a lot when I do the news. But um, I also run a lot of the news. And it's actually a lot different from RTI because RTI, we get our news from uh, wire services yes. mostly. Mm-hmm. There are people working for RTI who are gathering news yeah. for the English department yeah. to write yeah. into articles, right? Yeah, yeah. So. But it, at RTI, it's usually the Mandarin language service that does the bulk of the news lifting and then it comes down to the English service who then they transform that into uh, new stories that you see on the RTL website right. and you hear on the RTI cast. RTI also, the English service does go out and do original reporting as well. Mm-hmm. It's just... Not the bulk. Not the bulk. Right. Yeah. Now you're actually in the field? 
Yeah, we say? we're on the field. Uh, what's interesting is the job. I mean, I kind of literally because he does a lot of sports reporting as well. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm yeah. on the sports field. Yeah, yeah. literally, and that's actually really nice because I'm a big sports nut, and I like to tie a lot of the reporting that we do back into the sports. And I'm actually head sports reporter there. Oh, nice. Because a lot of people there don't understand sports. Well, I mean, they don't follow sports. I should say they don't follow sports. Like I understand sports, I don't follow sports. Yeah. So. So I am the guy in charge of following sports, which is, if you want to pay me to do that, that's more <laughs> more than happy. Long story short, Leslie's the jock of the office. He comes in and is like, what's up, nerds? Yo, what's up? I'm putting people in lockers. Gives everyone twirlies. <laughs> <laughs> Noogieing guys on my way to the office. I see how it is. Yeah. If I see anybody sitting in places where they shouldn't be in the lunchroom, I, I got to go fix that right away. Hey, hey. You don't sit with the cool people. <laughs> You have played D&D before. You cannot, you know. I, I will take that to the grave with me, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> don't you don't you dare. Not I'm not going like, to out you as a closet nerd. <laughs> no. You have to edit that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put that out now. But the Pokemon. Oh, yeah, okay. No, you don't do that. Everybody loves Pokemon, you know? Not, no, that's... Old people, young people. Well, who the, the Pokemon king of Taiwan, the guy with the 64 phones. Oh, he's got, oh, I think he's got like 72 cool. now. Oh, oh nice. wow, he's upgraded. This isn't even his final form. <laughs> He 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 was retired, right? He was like sixty seven yeah. or something. Yeah. I, I wrote a story on him. Okay, once. okay. The most fascinating thing is have you ever seen that guy's like setup? Because you have to go around playing the Pokemon game and it's like a location based game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for him to get around he has to ride a bike. Yep. And he's got a custom like rack Harness? of sixty an array. Yeah, yeah. an array of like seventy two phones. And do you know what like boggles my mind? Because Taiwan's prone to earthquakes, right? And when an earthquake happens, you get those alerts, those forced alerts, mm-hmm. right? That goes ee. So anytime alerts. that thing happens, he's got to do that. He's got to shut it off seventy-two times. <laughs> also, he's probably deaf by this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't opt out of those oh, notifications. No, it's it's like you know how you get older and you can't hear like lower frequencies. He doesn't he hear doesn't that hear anymore. Him. It's just he annoys the entire neighborhood. Like all the young people are like running out of buildings. And it's like oh my god, make it stop! And he's like what? What's happening? Do, 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 do. So Leslie is the jock of Taiwan Plus, but also a closet nerd. Well, I, on the other hand, produce a show, uh, a panel show on current affairs called Connected with Divya Gopalan. Um, mm-hmm. I, I am not Divya Gopalan, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, we have a we have a very talented host who is a decorated reporter and anchor and journalist, and I'm learning a lot. So uh, That's I'm. Cool. So, Overall, very happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although it is a somewhat a different kind of job than, than I was doing here. Yeah. Um, although I was producing my own show, but then adding you know the visual layer it makes it a completely different animal. Yeah, oh, like absolutely. Going from 2D to 3D, man. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So what's what's the show about? It's We, we try to uh, connect conversations that are happening globally on issues, important issues or interesting issues, mm-hmm. uh, and kind of connect them with similar conversations that are happening in Taiwan. Because... Most of the time, when you hear about Taiwan on international news, it's uh, for one of uh, two reasons. Right. Uh, reason number one is China, and mm-hmm. reason number two is China. <laughs> so, so we were trying to kind of show, or we are trying to show that uh, Taiwan exists without the context of China. It's not Thank about you. semiconductors. We do. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's not about semiconductors only. It's not about uh, national defense and like geo strategic threats. But, but also bubble tea. But it's also bubble tea. Well, we. we <laughs> We haven't done anything on bubble tea. Oh, well, we have, we have we I, done I, I, one I did something tiny, for you on bubble tea. Did that tea. thing air, by the way? No, no not yet. Okay. But, yeah, but we are we for are our sitting listeners, on it. But, but the context we, is I was in San Francisco. Yeah. And then Tomash asked me to go interview someone, a startup that does canned boba. Okay. And then wait, wait, canned. Like, canned. Yeah, canned well, boba. So right, right. well, I mean, like that might be misleading. They do canned milk tea and then boba on the side. Yeah. So yeah. they give you like a little baggie of boba, oh. and so you can pour the milk tea out and then add your own boba. Yeah. So yeah. when he said his show didn't talk about boba, I was like, wait a minute, it's, not yet. It's gonna. <laughs> it's gonna. No, but like um, spoilers. So I present some of the shows as well. Like if the topics are more nerdy or technical. Mm. Uh, so I presented one on AI. Mm. I presented one on. Um, manga and anime, manhua, mm-hmm. you know, in Taiwan, which a lot of people associate manga and, and kind of Asian style comics yes. only with Japan, but yeah. Taiwan also has. So a... when you host the show, does yeah. it suddenly turn into connected with Tomash Kopper? No, it's we keep we keep the branding, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I do get to say like, hi, I'm Tomasz Kopper, Sinigin for Divya Gopalan. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I love your news voice. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, watch... I don't put it on really like, uh, during the show. I did watch your thing, uh, your video clip of you getting made over. Oh yeah, in Every, drag. everyone has seen that one. It's so if you so haven't good. seen that one. 
This video has moved from our main channel uh, or the news channel to the recently launched uh, connected with Divya Gopalan channel, okay. like our own. Yeah. So if you want to watch that video, head over to uh, our channel on YouTube. It's at connected underscore TW. Put it. Put that in YouTube address. Right. And um, I I got a drag makeover from um, one of Taipei's most prominent drag queens, yes. Taipei Popcorn, <laughs> uh, who is a lovely, lovely person. And um, she came into our office and uh, gave me a total makeover, which lasted something like four or five hours. I mean, you were... That I was in there for a long time. It does take a long time to go from, you know, zero to 60 I drag know. makeup. Because, yep. I mean, it's also designed so that a drag queen can wear it on stage. It is, it's performance level makeup. Yes, so, yeah, mm. it fully is. So I, after recording that episode, I, I had this newfound appreciation for all the work that goes into being a drag queen Indeed. because oh my god mm -hmm. yeah it's uh even even though i wasn't doing any of it i was just sitting there and chatting and doing an interview yeah. uh it, it still tired it's me involved, out yeah. like yeah the makeup process was pretty extensive mm. and popcorn who did the makeup on you was they're, professional they're very good yeah, yeah. yeah the the it was very very artistic yes and yeah. precise <laughs> and you know very so please head over to the channel do yeah. see it yeah, yeah. do, do check it. it out um i mean it was one of our highest views, <laughs> viewed videos one of the questions i i asked during that interview was if putting on all that makeup all that you know stage sort of level makeover mm -hmm. yeah uh, on yourself the, does that change one's personality and uh, I guess I got the answer because I don't know if that was, you know, how tired I was after we were done with all of that because we actually recorded um, a, a little bit after the, make the, the makeup was ready mm -hmm. uh, at the office. And maybe it was the late hour. Maybe it was I was crashing on sugar or something. But, but I was a, prancing around. You had like, a different personality. I really did. It, it <laughs> really is a, did. It's a weird thing that happens. And I am also, uh, it's also happened to me. It's like when you've got your face on, you become sassy. Yeah. It's yeah. just what it is. Leslie, you have not yet enjoyed this effect. Give give me a taste of sassy Tamash right now. <laughs> well, I, uh, do you, you have five hours to do my, <laughs> to do my drag can't. makeup? He doesn't have his makeup on. Wait, so for five hours, what time were, what time was that at, or roughly? I, I think we started at 5 p.m. And like I think I, I got oh, out at 10 p.m. that day. Woo. Like Okay, so let's say four hours, and then the last hour was, was uh, me just prancing around the office, I guess, and, <laughs> and our videographer, William, recording me um but then i i didn't take the makeup off i went home like that yes yes so i was on the scooter my wife in the back yes. like just riding home and like the faces on other scooter drivers when we were stopping for red lights like priceless priceless oh i would have died to see that all right your wife was there with you during the yes. shoot i would have given anything for you to just pop home like that without any context <laughs> <laughs> honey i'm home yeah, exactly exactly Surprise. i'll just see what happens with your wife she's like oh my goodness <laughs> He finally snapped. <laughs> she would die laughing, I think. Well, your wife is very good at makeup herself. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think she would have been impressed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, number one, she would never believe I did that to myself. She was like, who were you seeing? <laughs> Which makeup artist did this to you? Cheater. <laughs> How dare you? Right. Okay, so besides uh, being made up by drag queens, what do you do for the show? Well, so I'm a producer, mm -hmm. uh, which means that I do kind of a little bit of everything. I select the content. I will conceptualize the show. Um, and and the, I don't do the whole thing by myself. Of Obviously, course. there's a team. team of people. Um, but we kind of split the episode. So if, if I'm working on an episode, I usually pitch the idea. I find guests, uh, write the script. I sometimes either create or participate in creating videos that we play during the show, um, which are like short uh, either explainers or kind of in-depth dives or like slice of life kind of stories. Oh, we try to involved. make Yeah, we try to have like a, a short little video to kind of break up, you know, 27 minutes of talking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also interview people online to get like soundbite that provide more perspectives. On each show, we have two panelists, both connect online. That's why connected. Right. We um, record in, on a on a using a virtual set, so we can kind of incorporate those feeds into into the set. And then uh, during the recording, if I'm not hosting, I'm in the control room running the show. Right. 
I'm in the host's ear telling them how much time uh, they have left, uh, what's up next, whether we should sort of skip ahead, whether we have time, whether we're falling behind. So a lot of intricacies. Kind of yeah, so you're also yeah. like a director mm-hmm. on that show as well. Uh, well, we do we do have a director who's actually sort of like uh, deciding what to put on screen mm. at any given time. Uh, I, I'm more just kind of making sure that things go uh, you know according to schedule. Have you ever had any interesting like conversations on that show? Um, recently, we had one on NFTs. Or, sorry, not NFTs, but blockchain. blockchain. Crypto. Yeah, okay. crypto. NFTs were part of the conversation, but it was mainly blockchain. That was uh, probably the most sort of contentious panel that I that I ever uh, hosted. <laughs> but that's I great was TV, that right? Yeah, yeah. It was great on, uh, for TV, but like there is this level of kind of awkwardness when two people are fighting yeah. or not far- fighting. They weren't fighting. But Deba- they were, debating? They were... It was a very heated debate. Was it a healthy debate? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say, yeah. They, they kept it, you know, above the belt. Um, <laughs> uh, but I still kind of felt a little, you know, like, oh, well, gentlemen, you know, like... Uh, cool it. Cool it a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Um, that was that was one of the the more heated debates. Um, yeah, we do interesting stuff all the time. Um, I, I mentioned manga and anime. I don't know why that episode kind of stands out in my mind. It was it was just very fun to do. And no, but all the topics that you've mentioned so far is, uh, are definitely really interesting and and worth tuning in for. Leslie, I've been watching your social media, and you've been flying places seeing people well most recently i flew because of a vacation i had to go to a wedding over in san francisco mm-hmm. but i have traveled this more this year than any other year yeah that I, I think i may have traveled more this year than i have in like the past yeah. five six or seven because uh, of the pandemic yeah li- well listeners i've only met tamash since i've joined rti but leslie i've known for quite a while because mm. we have uh we've taught before for the same company so. i've known you for about like seven or eight years at this point more than that i think nine something okay because so. i've been back to taiwan in 10 <laughs> if you told me like anything past that i'm like eh, kind of nine, pushing it yeah i'm gonna say eight or nine years yeah i very you know having having been friends yes this year has been the most traveling you've ever done yeah and i'm kind of jealous oh uh, well don't be because <laughs> when you're when you when it's out on assignment especially for a journalism job it is relentless oh, it is no. constant and then you're dealing with jet lag and it depends because I went with a presidential attache. Mm-hmm. So the president traveled to the United States. She also traveled to like Guatemala and Belize. But and what's, oh, first of all, what's that like traveling? You're in an airplane with the president. Yeah, but she's up in business class. Well, of course, you're and not you're, like you're, sitting you're, next you're, to yeah. <laughs> She's up in business class. <laughs> you're in the cattle car. Yeah, you're, you're in the bag. So you're man. in the bag. You're in, in yeah. the sardine can section. In the sardine can. <laughs> And it's just relentless. Like you get your peace and quiet on the plane. Even mm-hmm. not even on the plane, there's still stuff to like. You need to t- take care of. You need to record for the sake of journalism, mm-hmm. right? You have you have the escorting F-16s, and people want to see that. That's oh, great yeah. TV. So you have to record that. Could you too. see them like right out the window? You could see them right out the oh window. My God, that's amazing. Some of them get. They're not as close as you think, which makes sense, well, right? Yeah. But there's also, they do announcements there because mm-hmm. when Taiwan goes to the United States, it's a very sensitive topic. So they can't tell you anything before you get on the plane. And it's only when you're like halfway to New York, they're just like, oh, by the way, this is where we're staying. This is what we're doing. Okay. It's like very confidential. And then once you land, it is relentless. You are on the go. You're following the president and then you're taking your videographer with you. You're constantly thinking about what you have to do for work. And you have to think about like... Stressful. Yeah, it's like what's newsworthy about what you're doing right now. Mm. And then while you're there on the ground doing your work, home base is it's it's nighttime in taiwan so home base nobody's there to support you so you really have to rely on your own gut instinct and then that in itself is just like it it, it stresses me out just okay maybe i'm not jealous and then i have and then i have a video with me leslie is quite the little workhorse like he files like sixteen thousand stories per day when he's on deployment (laughs) yeah so like you know that's why i get deployed (laughs) i well the thing is i can find a story like under a rock i'll be like oh let's do that you know it's like uh it's like uh there and are colony stories under- all over the place, including yeah. under rocks. So. There, there, there are great stories all over the place. It's just whether or not you have the keen sense to like kind of mm-hmm. identify him yeah. and be like, okay, we can single this out and do it. And at the same time, it's not enough to have the story. You also have to have the images to do it with on TV. So you have to make sure that your videographer is on the same page with you. Mm-hmm. So that's always a challenge as well. And... I feel bad for some of my videographers because I, I, I pushed one of them. Oh, no. What? When you like, physically... I didn't push him. I didn't physically push him, okay. but, like, I pushed him to the limit of, like, work stress. Um... He's a family man with, like, a kid. And then every night he's just knocked out because our job, his job starts when my job starts. Yeah. But he ends later than I do because, because it... he's got to cut the final video. Yep. 
So while he's cutting, I'm just like, all right, man, I'm going to eat some Cheetos on the bed and watch some TV, <laughs> see what you got. <laughs> Hour later, he's just like, all right. I'm like, and I was like, oh, there's some changes I got to make. And when you're that tired and that worn out, like the last thing you want to hear is, ah, I got uh, a couple of changes, changes for you. <laughs> so I felt bad for doing that. But that is, it's, 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 it's the it's, name of the game. Yeah. Um, and then I went to Europe as well. And then I met Tomasz's family mm. yeah, in Warsaw, yeah. which is really nice. Well, we went to Poland. That's I cool. hooked him up with my brother. Yeah. I, so I've, I've never thought I've ever be- I'd ever go to like Guatemala, Belize or Poland or Lithuania. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, because it's for work, you're not like, oh, that looks nice. You're just like, <sighs> all right, where's the story, guys? <laughs> yeah. You can't like sightsee. No. And, you know. I mean, you, part of the job is sightseeing, well, right? True. Because they're going to take you. The most newsworthy spots often happen at the most notable places. Mm-hmm. So I went to Tikal National Park in Guatemala and we flew there and we got like escorted there, which is probably something I'll never be able to afford by myself. Yep. Just is that, is that the place with the pyramids? Yeah. Oh, I saw the pictures. Yeah, there's some Amazing. pyramids there. So it was it was interesting, but it's also it comes at a price. I will say that. Mm. It comes at a steep price of I don't know, I think I may maybe have taken three, four years of my <laughs> life at this point. <laughs> Those are at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Those aren't Don't the good ones. Those. But I'm really happy that you guys are, you know, doing cool stuff. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, um, it's been really lovely to catch up. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a great challenge. But <laughs> it's it also, and I, I really mean what I am going to say next. I, I'm really happy to be back here. I mean, yeah. it's it's fun I'm it's like, fun i have i have very fond memories of right working here at yeah RPA. this place uh well we did an episode earlier with um with the three of us fm girls of just talking about it's a great workplace environment yeah yeah so and tomas went to the go to the vending machine there's like hey i'll go see the vending machine <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> go yep. say hi to Still the vending there. machine <laughs> now, all the same stuff all the same well, stuff well thanks for kicking out with me tomas and leslie oh, thank no you for worries. having us thanks for having us hey and thanks, listeners, for tuning in to Radio Taiwan International. I'm Michelle Chang, and we'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Geek Out.